Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn. It's 10.45 at night. Oh, dark 30 back there. Um, tonight, we're going to be doing just a little bit of prep work for tomorrow's family dinner. Um, not going to any lengths or any real trouble. Just a few little nice things that I want to do for the people that I care about. And I'm grateful that they're coming over, friends and family, and all those good things so uh one thing that i'm going to do tonight is i am going to make some spreadable butter because we are going to be having biscuits um not making them from homemade i will fully confess that that i have bought grand's biscuits from the freezer section over at the smart and final and they are terrific buy because there are 38 biscuits in that bag for eight dollars and 99 cents and i really don't enjoy baking all that much so frozen biscuits are going to be just fine. Since we're going to make the spreadable butter first, and then we're going to make the honey butter second, we're going to use the exact same bowl for all three and do the cake mix last because I do not care if my chocolate cake... Why are those two different sizes? Oh, son of a biscuit eater. Oh, man. Okay. So... Evidently, when I went to the dollar store today, I bought one Pillsbury chocolate cake mix and I bought one brownie mix because I'm going to make a large cake to serve probably 15 to 20 people. And now I have a brownie mix and a cake mix. Lord's mercy, help me. I think we can fix it. Maybe. We're going to do something. It's going to be fun. I'm not worried. It's just food. It's just food. Okay, so let's get on to it. We've got lots of Mountain Dew. We've got lots of energy. We've got lots of stuff. Let's make it all. Okay, spreadable butter. So I've got my KitchenAid mixer right here. I've got two sticks of butter. I have a little bit of olive oil. And I have purchased spreadable butter in the past when it was on sale spreadable butter was not on sale and was over four dollars but i did load up on butter when it was on sale two for five so that's why we're going to be making our own spreadable butter because it is cheaper so let's go ahead and i'm going to throw in two sticks of butter saving my wrappers to grease my paint my cake pan two sticks of butter and to that I am going to add one fourth cup of olive oil to make it all spready. I'm going to go ahead and measure that out. Perfect. My butter has been sitting out but my house is a little bit cold. It's a little bit cold. So it's not very soft. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a one spin and just let it go for about a minute until we get all softened up. So yay hooray. That's pretty time efficient. And I've just got it back to a stir. And I'm just going to put some in and then give it another little pat down here with my beater bar and just get that all beat up. I'm going to go ahead and turn this up a little bit. Give it a little scrape down with a spatula too. Why not? Why not? We're going to have a lot of kids tomorrow and I didn't want them to struggle with getting butter and who doesn't love honey butter on a biscuit even if it's a frozen biscuit. And those are delicious, by the way, and way more economical than the packaged ones in the refrigerator section where you get six biscuits for $3. So, yeah, visit your freezer section. Check out your frozen biscuit options, your frozen bread options. Those Rhodes rolls are delicious. Um, but honestly, I'm going to serve gravy, too, so I really wanted biscuits. And if I'm lucky, there'll be some gravy left over for the next day for breakfast. If I'm lucky. 
because these people come hungry. So I'm going to give this a little bit more of a mix up. Be right back. Less than a minute later. It really whipped it up. I got it all the way up to seven. Butter was just moving and grooving all over the place. And now I'm just going to go ahead. This is what it looks like. It's soft but it still has a little bit of buttery texture to it. And that's going to be delicious. I am going to package it up inside of my um, challenge butter container here. And that was good. But um, yeah, too bad it wasn't on sale again this week. And let's just grab a spatula. There we go. And we'll go ahead and but I do want to get all of this off of this beater that I can. This waste is a terrible thing. We've got some delightfully spreadable butter that nobody will have to struggle with. And there we go. Into the fridge. Easy peasy. Okay, now let's go ahead and make honey butter. This was one of my free items that I got from Albertsons, and it's a challenge chocolate dessert butter. I'm not sure exactly what you do with it. Um, I probably could go to the challenge website and get some suggestions, but I'm going to put it out tomorrow and see if maybe these kids enjoy it. I don't know. Anyhow, on to honey butter. Yay, hooray. We've scraped our bowl fairly clean of the spreadable butter. I'm going to go ahead and put it back here on the kitchen aid. I'll make a little room here. I'm going to put my beater back on and grab two sticks of butter. That seems to be the thing tonight. I'm going to go ahead and pop that one in. And one more. Fabulous. Okay. I have some powdered sugar here. And I am going to add two teaspoons. This is a half teaspoon measure. So I'm going to do four of these. One, two, three, four. I don't measure these like all leveled off or anything. It got four. It'll be fine. It's just food and it's honey butter. Use some sugar, it'll be all right. Okay. And this honey bear, well, we're just gonna go ahead and kill it. I've got another one in the pantry, so we'll get that out. We'll have to do that sometime, the pantry tour. Don't you like to know what other people have in their pantry? What are you cooking? What are you doing? What are you saving that for? I want that. Where'd you get that? What, what do you do with that? There's all kinds of questions. So, and I don't know, this might be three tablespoons of honey. Come on there, little guy. You can do it. But lady, I like hanging out in the spice rack with all the spices. And you set me next to the molasses. Yeah, everybody has their day, baby. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and lift her on up. We've got honey. We've got butter. We've got powdered sugar. We've got everything. So two sticks of butter, about three tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of powdered sugar, that's going to do it for me. Oh, hello. And now I'm making a mess. See how I am? This is why we cannot have nice things. 
I'm gonna let this go for a couple seconds. Now my butter was unsalted. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a couple of shakes of salt to it. I don't think it needs much. Just a little essence to make it taste even sweeter. And this is almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and just crank it up. Whoa, Nelly, cranking it up. So this is what our whipped honey butter looks like. And it smells amazing. And you could certainly add cinnamon to this if you wanted to. If you added cinnamon, it would be reminiscent of the flavored butter that you might get at a uh, certain steak food, steakhouse, you know, Texas something or another. I can't remember what it's called, but you know, you know, they're famous for their dinner rolls and their butter and you fill up on that and then get your steak to go or whatever. Anyhow, scraping this down. Yay, gray. And then I'm just going to use my handy dandy little spatula here to make sure that we're getting every bit. This is just a to go container. I have several of these. These I buy at uh, Costco and they're great for just small portions. They're not particularly, um, like I would not put soup in this and then send it to lunch with a child or anything like that. I think they're going to have one soggy lunch, but they are great for holding a semi-solid food. You know, like whipped dreamy honey butter. And I would tell you that this is just for the kids, but the adults want it more than the kids do most of the time. That's all right. That's all right. I'll indulge everyone. Okay. There we go. There we go. We're still not going to clean the bowl. We're still going to let that puppy ride. We're still going to use this spatula as a matter of fact too. But I am going to wash my hands a little bit because they are very buttery. And we have to get a few things out of the pantry to fix my my brownie mix, cake mix. Okay, so let's see if we can fix my cake mistake. Fingers crossed. I have confidence. These cake mixes are great. They're gonna be terrific and, you know, yes, it'll be fine. So we've got our still dirty with butter and maybe a little bit of honey mixing bowl. Because we're not washing it till the very end because I have done dishes all day. Can you see them back there drying? It's terrible, vicious cycle. So we're first gonna start out with two thirds cup of oil. And so I added the oil amount from this one to the oil amount from this one, and then ever so slightly reduced it. So to two thirds cup. Okay, and then this one needs one fourth cup water and this one needs one cup. So let's do one and a fourth and we'll keep the water the same because we don't want it to be dry. And I like to put the water in after the oil. This way it kind of gets all the rest of the oil out of my mixing cup here. Good job, good job. Okay. This one calls for one egg. This one calls for three eggs. So I say, let's shoot the moon and put in five. What do you think? It's gonna be fine. And this is why I don't really enjoy baking that much because I don't like the exactness of it. But if you do, that's fantastic. Bake your little heart out. And then invite me over for something delicious. Three. Four. Five. Okay. 
And then I am going to say that there's plenty of leavening in this one, but probably not enough leveling agent in this one. So I think we should compensate by adding one of these little iced tea spoon scoops of baking powder in it. And I think that's all the additional bump it's going to need. But listen, I'm not worried about it. And I'll tell you why. It's because we're also going to go ahead and add a little bit of peanut, peanut butter powder. Because we're going to be making... A chocolate peanut butter pudding cake. You may have seen it referred to as a poke cake. My dad used to make this and he always called it a um, chocolate pudding cake. And we're going to go ahead and make that chocolate peanut butter pudding cake. So you know what? Nobody cares about the cake that much anyhow. It'll be fine. My mom worked outside the home. My father worked inside the home. He was a disabled American veteran. And that was the deal that they worked out. She worked outside the home. He took care of kids. He did most of the baking. He was pretty darn good at it. And... He one day was making a cake and had no frosting and he did not feel well and did not feel like making a frosting and so he had some instant pudding and whipped that up and put that on top of the cake and we have eaten it ever since then just that way. It's delicious and then you know a little whipped cream, a little cool whip, a little ready whip, whatever you got. Top it off. Won't hurt a bit. I'm going to put both of these in here together. Still using the same paddle. It'll be fine. And we got that peanut butter powder in there. And then I'm also going to use, for my pudding topping, I'm going to use one Dove milk chocolate and one Dove peanut butter chocolate for my pudding on the inside for the topping. Oh, it's going to be good. Even, even if the cake isn't exactly right because I've messed up, nobody will care. Nobody will. Oh, I think I got to look in the pantry because I also think I have some pudding or some, um, Reese's chips to go on top. Oh, that sounds good. Fingers crossed. I got to look in there and see what we can do. We're going to do it all up. Let's go ahead and get this puppy going. Do your best. Good luck. And I'll pay closer attention next time. Just go ahead and rise for me a little bit. That's all I'm asking, baby. I know you can do it. Let's let it do its thing. Hey, this is my very large dish. And it is probably 15 by 10. It's it's a, it's a large dish. It's the largest baking dish that I own. And, but it is nice and deep. So we got plenty of room for cake, plenty of room for pudding, plenty of room for whipped cream, cool whip, ready whip, whatever whip. It'll be fine. So let's go ahead and grease our pan with our butter sheets. And we want to work that way up the side because we do not want this to stick. And tomorrow's all about fun. So we don't want to have any cake mishaps. And usually if something comes out of the cake pan ugly or my cookie breaks or that cupcake is lopsided, I'm the person that will generally eat that. I don't know why, because I really want the better looking one, but I will generally eat it because I think that's just what 
we do as the makers of the items eat the ugly one. So I'm going to grease this up really well so that my piece looks as good as everyone else's tomorrow. All right, hot diggity. We got that done. My oven's preheated to 350 degrees. Because I've done some alterations to this out of necessity, I do not know how long I'm going to bake it for. I'm going to start out <clears throat> and look at it at the 20 minute mark and then judge from there. I'm going to get my toothpicks out. When it passes the toothpick test, I'm going to take it out and then I'm going to put some holes in it and I'm going to let it cool all the way down. I'm going to turn the overhead fan on to help us out with that. That makes quick work of a cool down. And then we're going to make our instant pudding topping. But we're not going to put the Cool Whip on until tomorrow, right before I serve it. But you'll get the general idea. You know what it, something looks like with Cool Whip on it. Or whipped cream. I know not all parts of the world have Cool Whip. But, yeah, it's Cool Whip is like whipped cream, except it's not a real whipped milk product. It's... It has the same kind of taste and a similar consistency, but it is more artificial. That's for sure. It's delicious. All right, there she goes. Oven's all preheated. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this baby in here. We're gonna check it at the 20 minute mark. feel like the witch and Hansel and Gretel when I put something in there. I'm always afraid like one of those evil kids is going to come shove me in. Just weird things that I think about sometimes. Hey my lovelies, it's really starting to smell like cake in here. So I want to get these taken out. Don't want to overcook my cake and we'll give it the toothpick test and see if we did our It looks and smells delicious. Alrighty, so it rose significantly and a little crack in the center, but I'm not worried about that. The pudding will cover it all up. Let's get a toothpick and see if this puppy's done. It looks rich. It looks chocolatey. We put the extra egg in, so I'd be really surprised if it was dry. Let's just go ahead and put it right there in the center. And it came out perfectly clean. Yay, hooray. Now I'm gonna turn the overhead fan on and let this sucker cool. We're gonna make some pokes in it. Now what I have is the Dove chocolate peanut butter instant pudding and I have a regular milk chocolate. We're gonna mix them together because this is what I have. Because it's instant, what I'm going to do is make larger holes in my cake than I normally would. Larger pokes. Let's see what I'm going to use. Okay, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this spoon because I'm using instant. And I want the pudding to go down deep into the cake. If I was using cook and serve pudding mix i would use my chopstick knowing that this small little bit would make a big enough hole for the hot pudding mix as it comes off the stove to run into that hole giving it enough chocolate pudding in that in that slice because these won't have the same viscosity as cook and serve pudding it's going to need a bigger hole so you have a significant amount of pudding in each slice. So use a bigger spoon to make your hole when you're making your chocolate poke cake with instant pudding. And it will be delicious. That's the only tip I have. Ch poke cake's easy. No frosting. Pudding. Cool whip. 
There you go. It's really hot in here now. Boy, that oven really toasted us up. I'm going to turn the fan on. going to drink some Mountain Dew. going to relax for a few minutes. Probably it will be cool, I would say, in about 30 minutes. Um, if I wanted to speed it up, I could probably take it outside. But I'm kind of concerned that a raccoon will take it away. So, yep, yeah, just going to turn the fan on. Lord, that fan sounds like a jet engine. i got to turn it off. Now I can hear myself think. Okay, this is beautifully cool. It's been about a half hour. And we're going to go ahead and put our holes in it. I'm just going to tip it up for you so you can see it really well. And I just want every piece to have a good amount of pudding. So I'm just going to poke holes in here. And... You can put as many holes in as you want. This would be a great thing to have the kids help with. Um, maybe I would have Andrew help with it, but I think he's gone to bed because he's not crazy. Anyhow, you just poke your little holes in. We're using the larger wooden spoon, not the skewer, because we've got the instant pudding. And... You know, if one piece gets two pokes, oh, I'm not worried about it. It'll be fine. This poke cake is also a great way to save an overbaked cake. So let's say that I overbaked it. It looked kind of dry. Well, you're going to be adding like four cups of milk and, you know, these instant pudding mixes. Uh, dryness should no longer be a problem. So, yep, I've done that before. When I have overbaked a cake, it just got some extra love with some pudding, and that was fine and dandy. This cake doesn't seem dry, so that shouldn't be a problem. But, yep, yeah, that chocolate put poke cake. You could also use vanilla pudding or pistachio or whatever pudding looks good to you or you have access to. Oh, I need to remember to look in the pantry to see if I have any. I, have, I know I have chocolate chips, but I'd really like to have Reese's chips. If I did butterscotch, butterscotch chips would be good. Heath bar. Oh, a little Heath bar. Oh, that would be a nice little garnish on top. Um, we're serving a lot of kids. So, they're, you know, I'm keeping that in mind. Something for everybody. But I'm excited to see them. Typically, we have a craft uh, for the kids and, and the adults. Some of the adults like to participate in the craft as well. They're welcome to. Okay, so I've got a bunch of holes in there. And, and the crack, but I'm not worried about it. That, those, those middle pieces, those will have a little extra pudding. Somebody will be really happy. So yeah, we're going to have a craft for the kids. We sit around, we talk, we have a great time. Um, it's really a, an enjoyable afternoon. People are inside, people are outside, people are in the front yard, in the backyard. We'll fire up the fire pit. Um, it's going to be like 71 degrees tomorrow, um, but it'll cool down at about the 4 o'clock mark. So we'll fire up the fire pit later on in the day. And I do need to get my KitchenAid bowl all washed up because it had eggs in it and this is a potentially hazardous food. And these will not cook. I want to make sure that I wash my bowl out. Wish we could have gotten a fourth time out of it, but three is enough. So I'm going to give that a good rinse up because I do not want to cross-contaminate my cake. I want this to be safe for everybody, especially kids and um, infirm people. 
and I have a couple of elderly relatives that are coming and like I said the kids so I don't want anybody to get salmonella or E. coli or listeria or any other terrible things at my house I like to think that this is a nice safe place to eat so let me get my bowl washed up and we'll make our pudding okay so I read the package directions on these I'm gonna go ahead and follow it it's two cups per and so we're going to need four cups. This is a two cup measuring cup. So we've got two and four. And then let's go ahead and get our milk in here. And get our pudding in here. Like I said, I'm using one chocolate and one chocolate peanut butter. And I think we've got a little bit of the peanut butter powder also in the cake. So it should have a good amount of peanut butter. certainly do this by hand you could do this with a hand mixer you could just do it with a whisk or a wooden spoon you could get the kids to do it just so long as the milk and the instant pudding gets all whipped up that's all that really matters but I'm lazy and I'm gonna do it on the kitchen the box says to whip it for about two minutes so Gonna get that timer set. The menu for tomorrow is gonna be really simple. I'm getting deli fried chicken from Albertsons because it's tasty, it's easy, and it's relatively economical for serving a large crowd. I've already had two calls this morning before noon asking me if I was making the macaroni salad, the kitchen sink macaroni salad. So I've already got that in the refrigerator prepared because it tastes better the next day. That's also why I'm up late making this cake because it is also better the next day when it refrigerates for a while. Um, so we're gonna have fried chicken from the deli. I'm gonna make mashed potatoes. I'm gonna make gravy. We've got that salad. I'm gonna make a broccoli slaw and I'm gonna make the biscuits. And my baby sister is gonna be bringing um, the veg so she's going to be bringing some corn and some green beans so we're going to have all of our all of our bases covered so this is gone for about two minutes i'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit more okay that looks good it looks incorporated it's a little thin right this minute it will firm as it refrigerates but thin is okay with me because that means it will be going down into all of the holes in our cake and there we go just making sure everything got incorporated off of the bottom scraping down the sides giving it just a few final stir ups do I see any lumps nobody likes lumps not in your pudding Pudding should be smooth and rich and delicious and oh that smells like chocolate and peanut butter nice okay now we're just gonna pour it over top and it's gonna run all over and this is a lot of pudding but our cake grows pretty significantly we made pretty big holes so I'm thinking yeah let's take this cake can take a lot of pudding We've still got some left in here, but I'm just gonna run my spoon over the cake and over the pudding and just kind of gently pressing to make sure that we're getting pudding down in all of those holes because that's the delight when you take a bite and oh, pudding. Pudding, um, elsewhere in the world, uh, this instant pudding was probably called a custard um we what you other parts of the world consider to be a pudding and what americans consider to be a pudding are two very separate things 
boy and this really is a lot of pudding it's really going i'm glad we used the deep dish absolutely that's a that's gonna be good that's gonna be delicious and that dove pudding the only place i have seen it here in arizona is at the dollar store and i think it's fairly amazing so I don't know where you can find it in your neck of the woods, but I find it at Dollar Tree and $1.25 is a pretty good buy for putting here where I live in the desert southwest. And it's hot. We eat a lot of pudding. We eat a lot of jello. Um, oddly enough, we don't eat that much ice cream because it is really hard to get it from the store even like the Albertsons across the street from my house within one mile, it's really hard to get it from the store to the house before it melts. And we're just going to make sure this is as even as possible because I do not want people fighting. And that side has more pudding than the other side. Yep, yeah, that might be something that we fight about anyhow. Now, this spatula is perfectly okay to lick because it does not have egg it's perfectly safe this is milk and chocolate pudding mix and it is not potentially hazardous i will go ahead and offer this to andrew if he was awake but um i might just have to kill this my own self and then go to bed okay so that's what it's like looks pretty even to me i'm gonna put it in saran wrap I'm going to put it over, oh, I got pudding all over my hands. Mm. I'm going to put it in saran wrap. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. It's going to sit like this for about the next 12 hours. And then tomorrow before we serve it, I will go ahead and just cover it with Cool Whip and either chocolate chips or maybe some shaved chocolates or if I have chocolate peanut butter chips, peanut butter chips, I will sprinkle those on top as a little garnish. Or maybe it gets nothing at all. Maybe it gets a sprinkle of cocoa powder. That could work too. But pretty much that's that's my prep work for tomorrow's festivities. I'm really excited to have everyone over. Glad you were here to watch me do this. Be good, be careful, look both ways, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This was our setup for family dinner night. So this was our appetizer section. We've got some chips, some dips, some cheese and crackers, some olives and pickles, that kind of thing. Something to snack on. This is my mom's Dutch oven. She always made mashed potatoes in this and I like to use it. Feels like she's here for family dinner night. We've got 50 pieces of fried chicken and 25 biscuits. That's good. I left Oh, five pounds of mashed potatoes. There they are. They were really delicious. We've got about four cups of gravy. I did not have any leftovers. There's a blank spot for my sister's veg. And these are the butters that we made last night.